everyone welcome back to my channel today we're talking about the new product from kvd vegan beauty their good apple skin perfecting foundation balm i was so excited when i heard this had launched it is a full coverage cream foundation i'm going to be doing a review and wear test for you if you find this helpful please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up at any point if you like it if you don't thumbs it down up to you but thank you for all your support let's get into the application i am so excited about this i do already have my eye makeup on and brows done so we could just get right to the face so this as you may probably already know from the title of this video and while you're watching it is the kbd beauty good apple skin perfecting foundation balm here's the packaging i have used this before I just kept the packaging to show you what it looks like. So this did used to be Kat Von D's brand. She sold the company. Now it's just called KBD Vegan Beauty. They recently have done some rebranding. Everything is vegan and cruelty free that they sell. And this is their new product. So it comes in this cool clear case with like a little bit of, what would you call that? Pattern. I don't know. Um, just a clear case, has the shade on the back, super simple. I do like the packaging, it's thin, like travel friendly. Uh, I am wondering if this would break easily though. I feel like with a lot of these plastic compacts, if you drop it, that could break pretty easily, but it just opens up to show the product. So let's read a little bit about this or I'll break my phone. This is $38 and it's 0.35 ounces. So it's not quite as much as say a full size liquid foundation. Tons of shades, although on Sephora, the majority of the shades are sold out. You can sign up on Sephora to get notified when it's back in stock if you're interested in this. I picked mine up definitely at the right time because it's just crazy how fast they sold out. I'm not totally sure if this is on Ulta as well. I'll check and put a link below if I can find it. But this is described as a buildable, full coverage, hydrating foundation balm with a lightweight, long wear formula and a fresh matte finish and fully recyclable packaging. Oh, that's cool. I did not realize this was fully recycla recyclable. So it's just like the palette they have as well. Some of the key ingredients are apple extract, hence the name, and sodium hyaluronate. I got the shade Light 08, which is described as a shade for fair skin with warm olive undertones. When I saw that they have a light olive shade, I got really excited. There's a shade on my hand there. It's not too yellow. I feel like it's really balanced. I try to match my foundation usually to like my self tan. My face is like very red, but my skin tone naturally isn't very pink. When I find that I wear like a cool tone foundation, I feel like it just looks so weird on me. So I usually stick to neutral warmer shades and this one I've been wearing the past couple days. I just love the shade. It works with my natural skin tone and when I have a tan on, I'm just really impressed with this shade and I'm just so excited to test this out for you. First off, the texture is it's not like a typical cream texture where it's thick it's extremely creamy but it's thin and almost like like it dries to like a not powdery but it's like clearly a more matte formula i was so excited when i heard about the launch of this foundation i love full coverage i feel like it gets washed out on camera but i do have like a lot of discoloration on my cheeks and of course, on my chin, we have a lot of active acne. That's where all my acne scars are. So I like a full coverage foundation because I can use a thin amount instead of layering up a light coverage foundation or using a lot of concealer. It's just my preference. And I also love a matte finish. So this just called my name. It's a lot different than a lot of cream foundations out there that are more dewy or like the clean beauty ones that are just, you know, if they don't last well, they might look good for a couple hours, but they're just usually not for me. So let's get into applying this. I'll stop talking and get into it. So I'll show you two ways to apply it. First, using the Rare Beauty. This is just their foundation brush, which is like pretty dense and tapered. I also have my Haley's Beauty sponge. So I'm gonna start on this side of my face with the brush. Now, the first time I used this, I got so much on my brush and this is like, it's crazy full coverage. You'll just see. I'm literally tapping in twice, which is too much. Like that is too much. Look at this. So since that was literally too much, I'm just getting the excess off on the back of my hand. So as you can see, like it literally just covered all of my redness 
with one swipe of the product. Like, isn't that crazy? I was so shook when I first tried this. So this spreads absolutely beautifully on my skin. You could already tell from this side of my face how much it covered. It just drags onto the skin beautifully. It does not cling to texture. It is just such an amazing formula. We're not even done with this review yet, but I love it. We'll just start with that. This isn't a first impression because I don't feel like they're as like valuable to you as a viewer. Instead, I like to try the foundations and get an actual like fully developed opinion and I can't stop wearing this. I mean with this kind of coverage using such a small amount of product I don't think you can get better than this. I will be doing a wear test as well. Just grabbing a tiny tiny bit more product to finish off my forehead. If you have anything to cover like if you have rosacea, if you have acne scarring like me or anything like that I feel like you would absolutely love this because you don't have to put on a lot of product to get full coverage. You can kind of see my darker acne popping through down here, but it takes it down so much. I really don't mind having like a little bit of scarring showing through. You could go in, I've actually been doing this recently with my finger and I just tap it over the blemishes and use it sort of as a concealer if I want to hide those even more. So here's one side of my face with the product on. As you saw, I used one swipe basically for this whole area and then I did a little bit more for my forehead and I used the brush on this side. It actually like, although it says it's a matte finish, it's, I feel like it's a really beautiful satin because you can still see this on my cheek. Like I had moisturizer on before, but not too much. I feel like it just really lets your skin, your skin's like natural glow show through, but it doesn't add anything. And I feel like that's what makes it so not cakey either. It's just not adding a lot of oil or weight or anything to your face. So let's do it on the other side using my sponge. So what I've been doing is just taking the side of my sponge and tapping into the product and then dabbing it on my cheek. I honestly really enjoy both ways of application. The sponge is going to sheer it out a tad more depending on how much product you use. I keep looking into this thinking there's a mirror. So as I was saying, you're going to get a little bit less coverage with the sponge, but I do feel like it has a smoother finish. But usually what I like to do is go in with the brush to get the most coverage and then just dab it with my sponge after to smooth anything out. And it just, it looks amazing. I really think either way works. Just depends on what you like to use. Again, picking up some more product and finishing off the forehead. I will say with the sponge, you have to use more product because I feel like it gets a little bit absorbed. I forgot to mention my skin type, but I do have normal to oily skin. And this is how everything's looking so far. This was the sponge. This side was the brush. I still see some acne, which I'm like totally fine with. I'm just obsessed with the finish of this and the amount of coverage. I feel like I haven't tried a good full coverage foundation in the longest time. So I'm just so happy that this new launch is just it's so good you could totally go in with another layer of this if you wanted even fuller coverage but i'm going to leave it how it is so i do find with most cream foundations this does sit a little bit in my smile lines i forgot to do today but i have a trick if you have troubles with creasing your smile lines when you're applying your product i actually like to smile you can see I have like very deep creases there. And then I put the foundation while I'm doing that. So no foundation actually gets into the line, but you get the area around it. It's kind of weird, but it works. Try it if you have issues with it and it will not crease, I promise you. But yeah, anyway, let's move on. I'm gonna do a concealer the rest of my face and then we will do our first check-in of this video. Next for my under eyes, I'm gonna use the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer in the shade Lace. And I'm only using a tiny bit of product just so we don't interfere with the foundation too much. And then using my Haley's sponge to blend this out. To set my under eyes and my face, I'm using the LYS Beauty Translucent Powder. This is actually a KVD brush. They make really awesome brushes. I actually wanna try their foundation brush they have. It looks um, kind of similar to this one. The only con you might run into with this foundation formula is I noticed right on my nose, just where I have a tiny bit of dryness right now, it is just like catching onto the dryness, which I don't know. I've never found a foundation that like makes dry skin look good. It just always looks like dry skin. I feel like it's creamy and it does well with it, but you can still notice that it's there. So if you do have dry skin, make sure you're exfoliated and moisturized or else it might look just a little bit weird if you have some dry patches like I do on my nose at the moment. I really don't feel like you need to set this foundation down if you wanted more of this type of like satiny finish, but I like to set my foundations because I do get pretty oily so I'm gonna go in with the same powder. I'm just using a big fluffy brush 
This is a winning combo right here. I feel like it's super weird that I love this foundation because I've never in my life tried a cream foundation that I loved enough to use every day as an everyday foundation. So I wasn't really expecting it from this, but I don't know, they did something different with this cream formula. It's truly amazing. I'm like already raving so much about it. Can't say enough good things. Here's what it looks like set down. It's a little bit more matte now. And I'm gonna finish out the rest of my face and we'll be back for our first check-in. I'm back with the rest of my face on. I did actually use another KVD product. This is their blush in the shade Fox Glove, which is a matte blush. I absolutely love this shade though. It is so pretty and really pigmented and smooth. I'll link the rest of the products I used for my eyes and the rest of my face below if you are interested. But I guess this is our first check-in. It's 301. I got a little bit of a late start today, but I will wear it until the end of the day. And I have been wearing this over the course of the last three days. So I do already have thoughts on how it wears, but I just wanted to show you. Here's what it looks like upon first application. I really don't have anything negative to say about how it looks at the moment. My nose, I don't know if you can even tell. Like it looks a little bit textural, but everything else is looking good. So I will check in later tonight on how this foundation is wearing and I'll see you then. So it's now 10.42. I'm back for my final check-in with the KVD Vegan Beauty Foundation. Here's what we're looking like. So it is pretty oily around my nose, especially, which is where I get my most oil with any foundation. So around there, it is breaking up a little bit and my forehead has some shine to it and a little bit did wear off on my chin. I was eating a sandwich and it got rubbed off. Also, I was testing the new e.l.f. Lash Out Loud mascara and as you can see it smudged on my bottom lash line which sucked because i feel like the effect was pretty so anyway other than the oiliness i feel like it stays really airbrushed looking and it also does not wear off i have worn this with a mask in the previous days that i tested it and like it didn't really wear off on my nose weirdly like it just it holds up really well which i feel like is very unusual for like a cream foundation that's full coverage that is a little bit more like satiny to be so long wearing Wearing, but it is very long wearing if you have oilier skin like me you might want to use like a mattifying primer in the places that you get oily but honestly i feel like for the amount of time i had this on it's looking really good so all is good with this foundation i really enjoy it i think if you have very oily skin you might not enjoy this because you might just end up too oily throughout the day and if you wanted something more mattifying this isn't crazy mattifying but for any other skin type i think this would be just such a beautiful foundation if you love full coverage it's also going to be sheared out to like a medium fuller I think it's just absolutely stunning. I like how it wore. I feel like my face still looks very smooth and even and covered up and very happy with how this foundation wear test turned out. Thank you for tuning in. That was it for today's video. Thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and enjoyable at any point. I'd love to hear your thoughts below on this new product. Are you interested in it? Do you like full coverage foundations or do you like medium or light coverage? I'd love to know your thoughts because Personally, for me, this foundation formula, coverage, everything was like exactly what I love, but I'd love to know if you're different. So thank you for watching again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.